then with the uh, redhead drake head I have um, done all my texturing and as much sanding as I'm going to do on the head and neck and breast areas. I want to talk a little bit about my wood burning tip. This hand piece would be a rounded heel medium skew. See how this heel is rounded instead of uh, straight and, and at an angle. So um, the rounded uh, allows me to get into areas I can't reach otherwise by um, pushing and pulling like this. Uh, it's very useful for that. Did a lot of the wood burning on um, the common loon heads on my one piece common loons because there's always somewhere you can't get in. The body's in the way or something else is in the way preventing you to um, pull the, the hold the wood burning tool the way that you would normally hold it. So you have to be inventive and you have to uh, be willing to try to do it a different way when it doesn't work for you. Don't let that be a uh, dead end. So um, I like to burn from front to back and some people do it differently. The other thing that I um, is important is to use a um, piece of wood that you can just use for testing the temperature um, so that you don't put your your tip down onto your bird and burn a huge hole inadvertently. So, you know, that's pretty hot. Too hot for me. So I'm going to turn it down. It's important to have a, um, a wood burner that has a low end adjuster or adjustment uh, feature so you can turn it down to zero and have it have zero heat. Sometimes you can't turn a wood burner down far enough to get a nice, um, I like to call it brown sugar color in my burning. And even this is a little hot. So I'm going to continue to turn it down until I get the temperature that works for me. And the temperature you choose is going to be relative to how quickly you move and uh, your house's uh, electrical current. Um, if you burn slower, you can see slow burn makes a big burn. So if I go fast, it hardly does anything. So what I do is I find the temperature that works for my own pace, my own comfort zone as far as speed goes. <clears throat> and this is a little darker than brown sugar. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit further. You can always go back up. It's okay. As I said, I like to start from front to back. And all of these are just little tiny face feathers. So I'm hoping that uh, you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. When you break the surface up, whether it's texturing or wood burning, <clears throat> it throws the light off into several different directions and it um, is directly responsible for breaking up the shine that would occur if it was a totally slick bird. You can see that I'm radiating these These are like individual feather barbs, and I'm radiating them the same way that they were 
textured in. And I end up coming back two and three times after my first pass, picking up lines that I missed, areas that I missed, breaking up lines that are too long. I just I can't get it all done correctly the very first time around. Kind of like when I did the uh, texturing. Remember the pencil lines that I used. They guided me so that this texture would be going in the right directions according to where it is on the dock. <clears throat> so I'll be coming back in and adding splits and breaking this up, but I just want to get the first pass of wood burning done. Right into the corner the mandibles, upper and lower. Good to look at it from a different angle as you're working. Make sure that you actually split things up the way it should. That's also where you're going to see um, your grain lines. Do you do your initial burn and get everything gone over your, your next few passes? You can come back and take care of these grain lines that may already be there or may appear because of the burning you're doing. Now as I get further onto the face, these feathers become longer. And you'll note that I'm doing kind of a twist at the end of my stroke, my burn strokes here, and that ends that feather barb by in doing so. So, there's going to be some areas that I'll have to employ my right angle small skew that will let me get into this area that I won't be able to reach with my with this actual uh, round heel medium skew. I actually hand bent uh, an old detail master uh, <coughs> tip, fixed tip in a hand piece so um, I could get into areas on the common loon with chick chicks I just could not reach in some of those areas so I hope that I'm not out of focus too much It's hard for me to keep it in view for both of us. I 
Oh. Residual wood fill there starts smoking. And I pay attention to the way I textured um, and burn accordingly. I'm just breaking up those texture lines even further. with every stroke that I make. You want to remain even handed here too. find that your uh, wood burning tip also wants to fall in between the grain lines just like your carving bits and your uh, texturing stones. So it's important just to note that that might be going on so that when you come back you can correct it with the wood burner and your green lines won't show. It definitely takes coming back and hunting down the green lines to make sure that they don't predominate the texturing that you've done. It can be very distracting to see those green lines. As judges, we tend to forgive them more often in the novice and intermediate. But by the time you are um, in the open or professional level, advanced levels, master's levels, you should be able to know how to deal with your grain lines and ditch them. But it's also related closely to the quality of Tupelo. The heavier the Tupelo, the more grain it's going to have and be more uh, difficult to carve. It's going to be harder to carve and much harder to uh, hide the grain lines that I keep referring to. I'm just emulating the burn line, I mean the uh, texturing lines. You can go in and shorten up your strokes after you add some depth a little bit later on, but I uh, just want to get through this initial burn. You can see wood burning looks different from different directions. 
So you will want to inspect your piece <clears throat> from all directions before you decide you're done. It'll show you um, places you need to go back and finish up on. nice when you get um, all of this done with your texturing there's not a whole lot of reference you need to stop and look at it I mean you've added the feather flow with your texture lines so now you're just breaking it up to finer feathers You don't want to work against your texture lines either. I mean, you went to a lot of trouble to put them in there, so it's best to uh, follow them. So remember your strokes get longer as you go further back on the bird. Some parts of the wood is, are you're going to find also burn a little bit darker it's softer in between wood um, the wood will vary from side to side on a duck bird and uh, just have to keep note of it you'll, you'll know by the time you're at this stage where the hard spots are or the soft side is or you'll know because you discovered it in your carving and in your texturing so remember what you learned doing that. do this cheek to about here and then I'm going to switch over and do the other side um, just so that I can stay even from side to side You'll also get to know how long a sitting can be for you. And uh, when you figure that out, let's say if you know you can sit down for about an hour straight, at about the half, 
way mark half an hour into your burning session it's probably a good idea to switch over to the other side and if you can plan accordingly um, you'll find there's an advantage to um, being uniform from side to side uh, you know we leave and come back next time and our mood is different and I talk about that a lot but it's true and it's important just to realize it in yourself here underneath this bill so I'll save the rest for my other tip hand piece the bent one I'll be coming and hunting down anywhere that I can put my tip. <laughs> 